Welcome back everyone to an other tutorial. In the last tutorial I made a classic health system with some hearts, a spike to damage the player and also to heal them. Today I want to upgrade my damage effect a little bit as the last time it would only trigger my health system. And this time the spikes will bounce back the player. Also disable the controller for a second. Um, and add a particle effect as well as a small screen shake as you can see with some red effect great so let's get right into it i have this scene already set up from last time in which i have my um fsm set up to get damage from spikes and also get damage if i fall down on the kill floor um and i've got some hearts to heal the player so let's get on to the spike and we're going to add a new FSM. And we're going to start with the usual trigger action. And the trigger should be the trigger, um, trigger enter 2D, collision with the player. And then we add the finished uh, transition and then we're going to add a new state. And the first state I want to add is uh, stop player script. Um, now this might be different uh, for everyone else, but in this case, I have a script for the player's movements. I don't use Playmaker for that. Um, I've checked into several tutorials, but it's quite tricky. So it's better to use code for player movements. In my honest opinion, um, until I find a better way, and then I will let you know. So what I'm going to do here is set property. And one trick I've learned the last time I showed this a little bit in a stump, stupid way, you can actually lock this playmaker. Then I can go to this, to the player and get the play con controller script, drag it in here. And it won't move now to the FSM of the, of the player. So this lock um, function is actually quite good. Um, and I just want to go on the player controller and enable. And the moment I leave it like this, the, the script won't move anymore. So that's going to be my start. And of course, at the end, I want to um, uh, set it back, turn it back on. So I can already copy this state. And... I can just do start player script there. And then I'm just going to set value to uh, the Boolean to true. There we go. So once I get triggered, it will stop the player script. The reason I want to stop the player script is if I keep on doing it, I will override the movement or the force I want to add with this state to the player. And what the target what i want to do is once the player hits this area that it gets a negative velocity so it bounces back and uh, this is great for let's say static objects which don't move it might be a little bit more tricky if you have enemies which shoot something at you because if you don't move um i will use a trick that if i move that it will give me a negative velocity based on my own movement. So if I come here from the right, it will bounce back to the left. If I come from the left, it will bounce to the right. And I'm gonna do this in the following way. I'm gonna, first of all, I'm gonna get velocity 2D. So physics 2D, get velocity 2D. And I'm gonna specify a game object in which I'm gonna drag the player and I want to get the velocity 2D into a variable. So I'm gonna make a new variable. Oh, I'm just gonna press here on factor because it's gonna be a factor two. And I'm just gonna say a new variable and I'm gonna, I'm going to call it get velocity. So there's a factor two and that's the X and the Y. And I'm going to get the velocity of the player when he walks in here, which is according to the speed set on my um, play controller. Um, I could also get the, do the get speed, but then you always have a positive figure. And I also want to have a negative figure because 
coming from right or from left should be a different figure. So this one um, works the best for me. Now, once I get this velocity, it's a very, let's say, low velocity um, for the player. And I want to, of course, give him a higher velocity to bounce back. And for that, I'm going to multiply this, this velocity by a negative. So I'm going to say um, a factor two, yeah, the factor two multiply, which is an interesting function. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get velocity and I'm going to multiply it um, by say one, 100, actually 110 is the one I used for the example. And that means my velocity is, um, is like around three or three and a half. And I'm going to get a, a minus velocity of minus 370 then. I'm not sure if that um, math added up. Um, so, but this is then the figure. And how I'm going to do that is then I'm going to set force or uh, add force, add force 2D. And in the 3D game, you have the add explosion force and these kind of things. But within 2D, we only have add force 2D and add relative force 2D. And in this case, I'm going to add force 2D. And I'm going to specify the game object. I'm going to add the force to the player. And I'm going to add here the get force or get velocity, which one, which I got here, get velocity. I multiply. I just want to set the right order. So what I'm, I'm getting the velocity, I'm going to multiply the velocity, and then I'm going to add the force to the player. Hmm. Right. And if I'm just going to demonstrate that shortly, I'm just going to add a weight here of, of one. And that means um, my character won't be able to move for one second because the player script would be turned off. But let's just see what this does. Exactly. So you saw I bounce against it. And of course, the system didn't reset or I didn't uh, make the playmaker in a circle. So I only did it once. But as you can saw, I was bouncing back. I'm just going to remove the weight here because these are now the first steps. Right, so the bounce effect is already there. But of course, keeping it one second is a little bit long. And I want to add a little bit more effects. So one effect, um, what I want to add is play a sound. And I've got a sound um, from this website where you can create sounds, the bfxr.net, and I just created a random sound. Um, it's quite loud, but this one is what I'm going to uh, add. It's the hit hurt, and you can randomly create sounds there. I'm just going to put the volume a little bit down, 0.8, so now we already have a sound. In addition, I want to add a particle um, effect. So I'm going to create an object. And I've made a particle effect. I made two particle effects. I will shortly show you what they are. I'm going to create this particle effect. And the spawn point is the spike there. And I'm going to duplicate it because I have a damage normal and a damage 2. And perhaps let's drag it shortly in here. And this is a blood effect. And as you can see, it, no, it, it also bounces against player. I should actually turn that off. <laughs> so it collides with everything. But let's not collide with the player because we should want it to be as if it comes from the player. Um, let's shortly look at this particle effect. Uh, duration five seconds. Um, just have a look at these um, options. It is a gravity modifier two, 50 particles. I'm gonna push out the particles in a burst around 50. It's a hemisphere. 
um, 360 degrees, one, one. I'm just going to shortly go over it. It has a color over lifetime, which perhaps doesn't make sense. Um, you can also just leave it, leave it. Um, and what I have here is also a curve. Why can't I go in here? Ah, here it is. Sorry. And it, the size will start big and then it goes down. So that m makes it look like the blood is a little bit disappearing. And I have here the collision with the world on 2D and um, a radius scale 1, dampen 1. And this will give me this kind of effect. And the second particle system which I have, let me just make sure that I apply all here. The, this was the damage 1. And the second one which I have put it there is without collision because I also just want some to fall down the screen. So this is the particle factor which I'm using. And let's go back to the spike. And I'm just going to spawn those two effects. And one additional effect. It, it might be overkill. It's up to you if you want to add this. I also want to fade in the camera, camera fade in. And here I'm going to set the timer of 0.2. I'm just going to make it red. So it's just going to, uh, let's say, make a, the, the screen flash red quickly and then um, <laughs> move on. And one additional one, which I used before in the Thunder tutorial, Thunder Lightning tutorials, Game Object Shake 2D. I also want to do this one. I know it's a lot of stuff I'm going to do here. And I'm going to specify the game object to the player camera and I just want a, a small shake amount. I'm just going to shake amount 0.015, rotation amount 0.015. Uh, leave all the other things unchecked. I don't want to do any special additional thing. And this will give me a great effect. And here, what I want to do here, because this has nothing to do with the health system, I want to have a similar cooldown as the health system. So I'm going to add here one more state, which is the weight state. And if correct, my health system has a cooldown of 1.8 seconds. So I'm going to make a weight here of 1.6 seconds, because there's also a 0 0.2 time delay in this one. Add the transition finished and complete the circle. Hmm. Um, this state we should give a name. Bounce, spawn, effect. Of course, I could have made uh, more states, but now I just put all these different uh, actions in one state, but I could have separated them if I wanted to. But this I also want to demonstrate that you can actually put a lot of actions into one state. Now let's see if this actually works. This is uh, the most important part. Well, that looks, as you can see, if I jump on it, I bounce in, uh, in the direction where I'm coming from. So it's a little, a little bit odd if I'm, let's say, landing on the other side, I would bounce back. But I think it's, it's quite a a decent system. The only thing, of course, if I have a dash, then that means I'm going much faster. And then also the bounce back is uh, much bigger. But I think in general, we can live with this effect. You can, of course, also instead of using the trick of getting um, the velocity, um, you could just add a force and define the force by a certain number. The only thing you have to think of is that yeah, if you want to bounce it to the left, you need a minus um, minus figure. And if you want it to the right, you need a plus figure. And I came around that by just taking the velocity of the player. And why this is perhaps not a good system if an enemy shoots at you. I mean, if you're standing still and the enemy would hit you with a bomb or some bullet, I want it to bounce back. You cannot use the get velocity um, trigger because it would be zero if I'm standing still. 
So perhaps there you need a um, another function. So I will look into this and perhaps come with a good solution for you. So I hope um, you can have some fun with this one. I will um, try to implement a lot of my tutorials into my game. If you ever played my game, which is already on itch.io, which is under development, you see that a lot of functions which I showed in tutorials are not yet implemented. So I will probably make one or two videos um, having a having a game dev lock as on how I'm implementing these different systems. And as I mentioned, of course, I might not make it all that bloody, but for your game, perhaps it's the best way to go around it, right? Good. I hope you guys uh, enjoyed this video. Please subscribe. Um, if you have any questions, just let me know. I will try to solve them as good as possible. Great. See you guys next time. Cheers.